Hey everyone, my name is Curtis Steven and I'm thrilled to be able to share with you a brand new Mass setting, the Mass of St. Killian. This is a setting for festive seasons, particularly the Easter season, and any other festive day where you would like to have something a little bit more majestic, a little bit stronger, a little more joyful, uh, Christ the King, uh, Corpus Christi, uh, maybe an ordination. Uh, this is a Mass setting that is really designed for those big feast days. You may say, why Mass of St. Killian? Well, the Mass of St. Killian is named after my late pastor and good friend, Monsignor Killian Broderick. He was an Irishman from Chicago and a Dominican order of preacher. He was a great preacher. And he took his name from St. Killian, a seventh century missionary bishop who traveled from Ireland down to Rome. In the seventh century, I'm sure that couldn't have been an easy task. And it was, a, I'm sure, a bold uh, decision to go and preach along the way um, on his pilgrimage all the way down to Rome. He ended up back in Germany and front, as someone with an Irish and German uh, background, um, that name really resonated with me. Monsignor Killian had a huge vision. And as you can see in the church behind me, that big, bold vision really is evidenced in the building itself. He challenged me as a young music minister fresh out of college to write a mass setting that was really uh, fitting these big feast days, these big celebrations of Easter and Christ the King. Um, he really wanted to fill this place with, uh, the, he loved brass. So at the dedication of our church, we had like 10 trumpet players uh, on the balcony. We had uh, a double brass quartet. We just really wanted to fill this place with majesty and joy and the might and power of God. Um, as a kid, when I uh, grew up, we would always have, during the Easter season, we would sing the Festival of Eucharist Mass. And I love singing that holy, you know, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. And so when we sang that God of power and might, I was really just felt that organ uh, uh, really uh, powerfully behind me as a, as a cantor. And I love that. It was an amazing sound. Since our music is primarily contemporary music, uh, meaning that we're leading it by piano and guitar, you don't get quite that sense of grandeur and gravitas that you get with uh, an organ at times. So to be able to uh, add a brass quartet or strings or additional instruments um, really makes a huge difference in this season. So this mass setting really gives a good foundation to be able to use those instruments. So we're gonna go through a little bit of the mass setting. I'll give you the, the basic tour so you are able to hear some of the music and um, I, I'll comment as we go as well. So let's get to it. Bye. 
They say music is about moments. And one of my favorite moments is in the Easter vigil when the catechumen is in the waters of baptism and they emerge to the sound of the congregation and the choir and all the brass and every instrument singing and praising God with a grand alleluia. Alleluia, our song of victory. This is one of my favorite pieces, so I'm really excited to be able to share it with you guys. So take a listen. So water flowing from the temple's right hand side And all to whom this water came were saved and shall say Alleluia So with the penitential acts and the mass of saint killing, obviously you, there's a few different options. So one is the sprinkling rite. That's my preferred. I love that piece and um, I use it specifically at least for the octave of Easter. So that we use it two Sundays in a row uh, where the priest will do the sprinkling rite. But the other options are a simple Kyrie. Um, so it's a call and response. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, and so forth. Um, or you could use option B. And I don't know how many of you knew this existed, but I didn't until just recently. I've never actually heard it done in a, in a mass before. So I figured, you know, let's set it and see if uh, people will use it. <laughs> it. It's have mercy on us, O God, for we have sinned against you. So it kind of goes like this. Have mercy on us, O God. And the people respond, for we have sinned against you. Show unto us your mercy and grant us your salvation. And then the priest would sing the minor absolution. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And the people will respond, Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. almost never used penitential act option B followed by a simple Kyrie you know then you would go right into the Gloria of course and you know what if we start using it who knows we might just set the next cutting edge trend in liturgy and all our friends will be impressed all right just saying okay next up is the gospel acclamation we used to use the Celtic Alleluia which uh, I loved um, and we use it a lot, but the mass setting just didn't feel like it, it was complete without its own gospel acclamation. So I wanted to write something that would just make people rise up to their feet and sing. 
You'll notice that this recording is a bit more acoustic uh, with choir, piano, and guitar only, not uh, the extra brass and the other things that we have in the other tracks. to say it is just so much fun to play that every week i look forward to it every single time all right so next up is the holy the holy sounds a lot like the gloria you're going to listen to the full mix um of a recording that we did uh the video i'm not trying to fool you is of a mass that we of thanksgiving that we did uh in my natural habitat of a brass quartet like that you really ought to try it it's pretty amazing um if i were to say in movie terms what this mass sounds like it's like braveheart meets back to the future i know that sounds kind of weird but um this particular theme in the lamb of god was inspired by murren's theme uh, she was the wife of william wallace in braveheart and if i could get eric riegler who played the ulian pipes to play on this particular piece it would be a real dream come true um I needed something interesting to happen in the third repetition of the melody. A lot of times people uh, modulate, and I didn't want to modulate, so I just used a simple shift to the major, and it really did the trick, and it's a really amazing moment, so check it out. So that's a bit of a walk through the Mass of St. Killian. I'm so thankful to our partners at OCP uh, for helping me share this with you. I know it's been bearing fruit in our own community. Um, it's parish tested and congregation approved. We've been using it for some time and I'm thrilled to see what kind of fruit uh, it bears in your own community. So uh, God bless you. Thank you for your time and have a great day. <laughs>